Hi, Richard from Love Brewing. Just wanted to run through some uh, wine making today with you. Um, if you've never made wine before, just follow this little video that we've got and hopefully we'll be able to show you what's involved and how, uh, how we can make some top quality wines. So the first thing and most important thing is everything that comes into contact with the wine has to be clean and sterilized. Now that applies not only for wine, but any beer that you're going to make and any spirit that you're going to make. So anything that comes into contact with the wine needs to be really, really clean. And that's why we use a sterilizer to actually do that. I'm going to come on to that in a minute. Okay, so the second thing we're going to deal with is temperature. We need to make sure that we've got a temperature between 20 and 25. That's what we're looking for to be able to ferment so we're looking at a room temperature of between 20 and 25. Now look, that's not an absolute given. We can drop down to 18 and we can go up to 27. But the problem is most people haven't got rooms that are accurate enough to record it. So if we go for a given of between 20 and 25, we won't be too far out. And again, I'll come on to temperature in just a moment as to how we can help that. So sterilization first. What we said was anything that comes into contact with the wine beer or spirit needs to be immaculately clean. Here I have a bucket and the bucket is going to do the initial fermentation. So with the bucket I'm just going to take here about five litres of water. Now if you can use warm water so much the better. The steriliser does dissolve much better in warm water. Now, the thing to remember, and it's great at the start because all your equipment's new, but the thing to remember is to try and keep all your equipment lovely and clean. So every time you've used it, make sure you give it a really good wash so that when you come back to do it, it's all nice and clean. Now with two sterilizers, we have a cleaner steriliser and we also have a no rinse steriliser. And with your starter kit, you will have one of these two that you get. If you're using the no rinse, all we do is we add the no rinse and it means, as it says, we don't then have to rinse it out with water. With the cleaner steriliser, we've got a lot more chlorine in that. So that works and that will remove stains as well as sterilise. So with that one, we do need to give it a rinse with water afterwards. Now the sterilization process normally takes about 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm just going to lift this up here now. As you can see, we've got about five litres in the base of it. We're going to add um, a teaspoonful of the um, cleaner steriliser. Um, I just like to just sprinkle a bit in there like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in there all the things which are going to come into contact with our, our making process. So that's the... Um, uh, airlock, the bung, the mixing spoon, a hydrometer that we've got here and a thermometer that we've got here and this is going to take about 20 minutes for it to come into effect. So while we're waiting for that to clean and sterilize I'm going to talk to you about temperature but just before we go there what I, I always tend to do is to find a nice clean sponge, really clean sponge or a really clean cloth and all I do is just put that in my liquid and then I'll run the water all round all parts of the bucket so that all parts of the bucket are coming into contact with this cleaner steriliser. And also the lid needs to go in as well. So again, I'm going to run solution all over the lid to make sure that is covered. And I'll repeat that two or three times in the 20 minutes. And don't panic if you get your hands in there. That's great because not only your hands are going to be cleaned up and it means that then when we're doing the mixing later on, you don't have to worry about any infections coming off your hands. So that's a really good thing. So as I say, don't worry about that. So we're going to move that to one side and we're going to leave that for about 20 minutes. All right, so we've now been around 20 minutes, give or take. I mean, we're not too alike. So we, we, we've got our, our, our uh, bucket and it's all nicely clean and we know it's lovely and sterilized. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to literally chuck it away. Sterilize. 
ionization all complete. We're going to now talk about temperature. So we said we're looking for a temperature between 20 and 25. Now luckily in the UK most people have the problem that they can't get up to temperature. Unlike in Australia and New Zealand where they're trying to actually drop the temperature because they've got it too hot, we're actually looking for raising the temperature in, the most, in most average houses. So what, what options have we got? Well, as I said, we're looking for a room temperature between 20 and 25. Easiest way is we insulate the container. So we can wrap the container in a blanket. Quite simple. That's going to help to retain some of the heat. If we're still struggling with temperature, then we've three things which are available to us. And I would, add, I would ask you to look on our videos because we actually do some really good videos on temperature control. But the three things which are quite simple. We have what's called a brew belt, and this is a belt that will wrap around the container. It's around 20 pounds, it's, it's okay, it's not my favorite. We always use a time clock with anything which is not thermostatically controlled. So with the brew belt, we'll use a time clock. We've also got a heat tray, which the bucket can sit on. And this is also great if you're doing beer because you can put your beer on for a secondary fermentation. Now with the heat tray, made of plastic, it's quite strong, about 35-ish pounds, um, and it will be on the whole time. Uses about the same as a light bulb. And that's why I'm saying, because this is on all the time, we need to use the time clock with it because the time clock will control when this comes on and when it goes off. If your house is around 20 during the day, you don't need the heat tray on. When it's at night and it's going cold or it might be in a garage or whatever, then you will need the time clock. So that's why we strongly recommend a time clock. And the third thing that we have is the immersion heater. Now this will actually drop inside your liquid and a lot, of, a lot of people will remember that as a fish tank type heater. So that's going to drop inside your liquid through the lid. Now if you do want one of these, when you order, you need to make sure that you're specifying that the lid has been drilled to take this because it's a different size hole. So that's something to bear in mind. This is preset to 24. So that's within the range of 20 to 25 room temperature. Now one thing I will always say is your liquid temperature will always be two or three degrees higher than your room temperature. The reason for that is the yeast is working in the bucket, the yeast is giving off heat, and as it gives off heat, it's raising the temperature in the bucket. So remember that, please. If we're setting this to a room temperature of 20, uh, sorry, a liquid temperature of 24, in reality, we're saying room temperature is about 22, because once it gets up to 24, it switches itself off. So no need for a time clock on this one, okay. Thank you.